What is a codec in a filmmaking context? It's something we see all the time when looking at camera specs, but what does it actually mean in layman's terms? Which one should you use? How can we take some knowledge of codecs and use it to our advantage? All of this to come. I've timestamped everything below so you can just skip to the bit you want. And I am on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers. And if you could hit that subscribe button, it really would make my day and um, it, yeah, it means a lot to me. So thank you in advance for that. This video is not sponsored, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. The way that works is any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy gear, I do reviews, and then I give the gear to my backers via a giveaway. If that's of interest, it's a great way to support the channel. Plus you can win some cool stuff. Link below. So the word codec is actually a portmanteau, a fusing of two words, coder and decoder and it is a format of compression, basically a way of shrinking file sizes. Codecs are used in so many different forms of media, but of course, remember we're focusing on video and the basic most common way that codecs work is during the coding process to reduce the file sizes, they selectively remove certain frames of your clip. But then during the decoder process, they'll insert filler frames. You know what? It's easier to demonstrate this visually, so let's do that. So there are a couple of main types of codecs. There's intraframe or all eye and interframe or long gop, aka long group of pictures. So this represents one second of footage and an all eye codec would capture all the information from each frame. And obviously this is a more bulky format. Your file sizes are going to be bigger this way, but perhaps more commonly you'll find long gop codecs in cameras. So if we zoom in and take a closer look, we can see how long gop works. So this codec contains I frames, P frames and B frames, hence why long got is also sometimes referred to as IPB. The I frame is our keyframe and all the information from that one is captured. P frames are where the codec is looking for differences in motion from frame to frame and B frames look at the motion in the previous frames and then try to predict what's going to come. Remember people, I'm trying to explain this in layman's terms, so I've not gone into the super technical nitty gritty with this. I've just tried to keep it as simple as possible. I know there's more to it. Now the amount of P frames and B frames in that long group of pictures determines the compression level. The more of those frames, the more compression there is, the smaller your file sizes, but then again, it's more work for your computer. So when you shoot a video on your phone, it uses a codec to reduce the file size. When you post that video and on YouTube or onto uh, or send it on WhatsApp, it again uses another codec to shrink the file size even further. And just quickly, a brief history of codecs. Did you know the first dedicated video codec was H two six one? That that does not roll off the tongue easily. And you know what? This this, this was back in the eighties. Back then, I mean, it was it was pretty poor if we're honest, by today's standard, but of course back then it was pretty amazing. And following that, of course, there was H.26234, and at the time of filming, H.265, with the kind of uh, rival company being MPEG, Motion Picture Experts Group, even if they say so themselves, and that they had MPEG 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth in a similar kind of timeline of, of upgrading their codec. I think it's really important to acknowledge the importance of codecs on a global level. You know, we video guys are really hard on compression, particularly when it comes to, you know, streaming media such as uploading to YouTube. But for a second, imagine that codecs just didn't exist the amount of energy needed to store the sheer volume of data would be kind of unthinkable. I mean, you certainly wouldn't be able to watch this video. Uh, I mean, not least because it would be called What Are Codecs? A word I just invented. But also because, you know, I don't think YouTube would exist either. I, I don't see how it could. In fact, it would affect all media. So yes, codecs are integral. And I have to say, I am kind of feeling after all of this research, quite grateful and appreciative of codecs. Of course, codecs shouldn't be confused with wrappers. Wrappers are file types such as MOV, MP4 and that kind of thing. It's very commonly done, but yeah, not to be confused. But what codec should you use? 
I know a lot of people think that H265, oh, and by the way, America, you don't need to say H.265, because we all know what you mean. But a lot of people think that because that is the newest codec, it's somehow the best and, you know, and better than H H.264. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. Whilst it's true that H.265 is more efficient and your file sizes will be smaller, it does mean a little bit more heavy lifting on the decoding side of things for your computer system, and that can slow things down. So I say H.264 is still great, even though, you know, I don't think it should be quite considered yesterday's technology, but it did come out in 2003. But it is what, you know, it's what Netflix broadcast in right now. It's also my current codec of choice. It, for me, is still that sweet spot of, you know, uh, fast-ish editing and small-ish file sizes. I know a lot of people, um, you know, H.265 has been largely embraced, and I, I get it, I do. However, my favorite codec is ProRes, and this, these are, it's an older format, and it's uh, less compressed than the aforementioned uh, two, but, for anyone who has tried editing with it, you know. It's just so lovely to work with, and um, people people always use buttery, but, um, and yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of understand. It's good. The really encouraging thing about the editing speed side of things is that a lot of computer systems now support hardware acceleration for these codecs. The fact that CPU producers seem really committed to hardware acceleration Coupled with the fact that storage prices for storing your footage are still just improving all the time, these two things are gonna make the choice of your codec less and less important. And I love that. So now let's take everything in this video and grind it up and make a nice espresso of, you know, conclusions and tips to take away. Codec means coder decoder. That's a portmanteau, baby. Codecs are used to decrease file sizes, and the world will be quite different without them. All I or long gop is a choice you have to make. Personally, I think long gop is completely fine for most applications. Codecs shouldn't be confused with wrappers like MOV or MP4. The choice of codec usually hinges on how well your computer deals with compressed media and how much storage space you have. However, we should all be encouraged that with hardware acceleration and ever improving storage prices, your decision of codec will become an easier one to make. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Did you agree? What did I miss? Definitely let me know down in the comments. I'm down there as much as I can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video, of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.